In a blog post titled The Age of AI Has Begun, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates said that the development of artificial intelligence is the most important technological advancement in decades, calling it as fundamental as the creation of the microprocessor, the personal computer, the internet, and the mobile phone. AI has been around for a little while now. In fact, my companies have been using everything from the OG version of Google Dialogflow to self-trained models that our engineering team have built for a number of years. But this last week alone has seen an insane explosion of new advances in AI with just about every major company releasing updates or integrations as a major AI land grab takes place. With so much going on, I wanted to put out a video summarizing all of these recent AI announcements so that you don't get left behind, but also because this paradigm shift into the age of AI brings with it an underlying feeling of uneasiness that everything is about to change. Hit that subscribe button and let me explain. Technology adoption generally follows a kind of bell-shaped sigmoid curve. You have a slow takeoff as the technology is invented and the major bugs are get ironed out. And then you have this incredible explosion of growth and hype as people find it useful and the technology gets better and better. And loads of similar companies start to pop up and enter the market to jump on board that hype train, a little bit like the gold rush. Then, as people start to understand what the tech can actually do, and you begin to reach the limit of what's possible with that technology, the hype starts to fade, the rate of progress flattens out, and that exciting tech becomes part of our daily lives just like it did with the iPhone and streaming music online. As you may well have seen from my video on AI writing tools, there are lots of AI copywriting companies and tools out there that use OpenAI's API that have popped up following that hype cycle we just talked about. And it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens to a lot of these companies based on some of the other recent announcements that took place. With the release of GPT-4, OpenAI introduced longer context of up to 25,000 words, visual inputs where images can be used as inputs to generate captions, classifications, and analyses, and GPT-4 can even solve difficult problems with greater accuracy thanks to its broader knowledge and problem-solving skills. Now, I've been trying out GPT-4 on my ChatGPT Plus subscription and also via the API in some of my companies, and it's really great with the responses seeming less generic and prompt personas being more creative. And OpenAI weren't done there. They released plugins, which allows plugins to be created and linked to the ChatGPT interface for things like browsing the web, or looking through OpenTable, or a whole host of different plugins created that link into ChatGPT's API. The first set of plugins includes plugins for Expedia, FiscalNote, Instacart, Kayak, Klarna, Milo, OpenTable, Shopify, Slack, Speak, Wolfram, and Zapier. My particular favorites are Wolfram, which allows you to connect ChatGPT to Wolfram Alpha and run a complex math equation, and also Expedia, because finding and booking holidays is a real pain, and this then acts as your own concierge. It wasn't all good news for OpenAI though, as a ChatGPT glitch allowed some users to see the titles of other users' conversations, which raised some privacy concerns. Now, AI has the potential to disrupt search and content creation, two huge markets. The leader in search obviously isn't gonna want to get left behind. So Google announced that they're adding AI functionality to their workspace tools like Google Docs and Gmail. The company plans to bring additional generative AI features to its chat, meet, sheets, and slides applications, meaning you'll be able to generate content quickly within these already well-adopted tools that even the slowest technology adopters are gonna be able to get access to. Google also announced that their medical-specific language model, MedPalm 2, consistently performed at an expert doctor level on medical exams, scoring 85%. This is an 18% improvement from MedPom's previous performance and far surpasses similar AI models. And Google has also started rolling out its own AI chatbot, Bard, but it's only available to certain users and they have to be over the age of 18. Now, unlike its viral rival ChatGPT, Bard can access up-to-date information from the internet and has a Google it button which accesses search. It also name checks its sources for facts such as Wikipedia, but Google warned that Bard would have limitations and said it might share misinformation and display bias. This is because it learns from real world information in which those biases already exist, meaning it's possible for stereotypes and false information to show up in its responses. If you remember back to June 2022, Google engineer Blake Lemoyne was suspended from his job after he spoke out of his belief that the company's Lambda chatbot was sentient. While Bard is built on top of Lambda, it's not exactly exactly the same. Google says it's worked hard to ensure that Bard does not repeat the flaws of earlier systems, and that means avoiding hallucinations where it makes up facts to avoid admitting it doesn't know an answer. But despite this, 
Early reviews suggest that BARD is a little underwhelming compared to ChatGPT, and Google is uncharacteristically paying catch up to Microsoft. As Bill Gates mentioned in his blog post, Microsoft have been speaking with the OpenAI team for almost 10 years, and they're a major investor in OpenAI. Microsoft have already integrated GPT-4 into their Bing search engine, which has rejuvenated a search tool that was previously nowhere near Google. Not to be outdone on generative content, Microsoft also unveiled their 365 Copilot, which brings AI enhancements to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and Teams. Copilot is basically what everyone wishes Clippy was, with the ability to summarize the key discussion points of a Teams conversation, provide recaps for someone who joins late or misses the whole meeting, as well as the ability to create PowerPoint presentations, including images from prompts. It can also draft emails, analyze long documents, and create summaries and graphs of data in Excel spreadsheets. Now, like we said already, by bringing these tools to mainstream platforms, they're going to become much more standard, just like the formatting bar in any of the applications we've mentioned. And they won't be seen as crazy new features. But most importantly, the ability to engineer good prompts is, in my opinion, going to be an essential skill that everyone from students to professionals will need to become good at. Continuing on with the crazy announcements, Mid Journey version 5 was also released, which generates even more realistic images and has improved standard language recognition. With an API in the works, we can expect other products to start using Midjourney for their art generation capabilities really soon. In version 5, images are more realistic and are more responsive to intricate changes in text prompts. Some of the arguments like AR, IW, and Tile, which were taken away in version 4, have been brought back. And images with limbs, fingers, and toes have a significantly better quality, and the stylized option gives a wider stylized output, much more vibrant than version 4. One of the coolest additions is the ability to set the weighting that an input image has on an output. If you provide an example image of a statue, you can set a numerical weighting which instructs Midjourney on how closely the output should resemble that original image. Over in China, Chinese search engine Baidu released their chatbot Ernie, which unfortunately received a lukewarm response from both shareholders and the public. And a little bit like Bard, the performance caused a 10% drop in Baidu's shares. Back in the US, NVIDIA announced their newest cloud services offering, AI Foundations, that will allow businesses to build, refine, and operate custom large language models and generative AI models that are trained with their own proprietary data and created for their unique domain-specific tasks. These models include Nemo, NVIDIA's language model, BioNemo, a drug and molecule discovery-focused fork of the Nemo model, built for medical research, and Picasso, an AI capable of generating images, video, and 3D applications. This release is pretty exciting as NVIDIA is empowering businesses and individuals to harness the power of AI to create their own tailor-made solutions. We've seen lots of image and text generative AI enter the main street, but what about video? Wouldn't it be cool if you could generate your own footage? Well, Runway Research announced the release of Gen2, a cutting-edge multimodal AI system that brings text-to-video synthesis to a whole new level. With Gen2, you can generate never-before-seen videos using text, images, or video clips, opening up a world of possibilities for content creators. Some of the capabilities here are really exciting, with the ability to generate videos from text and image prompts, as well as more advanced features like adding masks to video and stylizing existing video content. Sticking with creativity, content creation giant Adobe announced that they're revolutionizing the future of creativity with their next generation AI capabilities. They're integrating generative AI into the everyday workflows of marketeers and creative professionals, making it easier than ever to bring your wildest ideas to life. The company announced a family of creative generative AI models called Adobe Firefly, and releasing the first two tools that take advantage of them. One of the tools works like Dolly or Midjourney, allowing users to type in a prompt and having an image created in return. The other generates stylized text, kind of like an AI-powered word art. According to Adobe, everything fed to its models is either out of copyright, licensed for training, or in the Adobe Stock Library, as it tries to navigate that slightly sticky area of AI copyright. Now, there's a heck of a lot going on in terms of artificial intelligence, and it's super exciting, but it can also feel slightly scary with the pace of change and the idea that AI could replace jobs at a time when finance is already tight for most people. The best way to navigate change is to embrace it, and to make sure you're staying up to date with how to effectively use new AI tools and engineer prompts to get the best out of those tools. In my opinion, AI is never going to completely automate everything. It's still going to need a human conductor to make decisions and supply it with prompts. 
To help you out here, I've got some great videos in the tech series covering prompt engineering, which I'll put up over here. Thanks so much for watching every Sunday morning and for subscribing. Do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you again next time.